I bought a Mac Studio base model. It doesn't have enough SSD internal storage. Of course, to resolve it, I need external SSD. I have been facing the dilemma. To have a great speed SSD, it will cost me a lot. The similar cost if I directly buy a more higher end Mac Studio. The other way is okay, I buy some cheap external SSD, let's say from SanDisk or Samsung. There are promotion sales from time to time, but the problem is normally those type of SSD don't have super good performance. So the way to resolve it, my own way, the cheap way, is I purchased the Samsung T7. In fact, I purchased two. Let's see how I resolve my storage problem. Before testing the external SSD speed, let's first see what the native built-in SSD performance looks like. I already launched the disk speed test. Start testing. Okay, for write it's more than 4000 and for read it's about 5.5 thousand. So lightning fast. This time, let's switch to the external SSD. Let's see, without building a RAID yet, let's see what's the performance. Choose T7. Okay, so the RAID is more than 900 megabytes, and the RAID, yeah, 700 something megabytes close to the theoretical speed specified by Samsung but it's not fast enough in some video editing scenarios according to Samsung's T7 specification as you can see the speed is up to this number so our real world testing is close to this number you may ask, wait a second, your Mac Studio has a built-in 10 gigabits port, right? Why not simply use it to connect to NAS? Yes, I'm showing you a terminal. Let's test the theoretical speed for the LAN port. Let me test the upload speed first. I'm connecting to a NAS, which is running iperf 3. Okay, 9.9 .9 gigabits. I'm good. Now let's test the download speed. I already specified dash capital letter R. Yes, close 9.8, 9.9, right? The performance is pretty good, but this is the theoretical upper limit when it comes to speed already. In real world, when you connect to NAS, the performance also determined by your NAS. I have the similar speed if you compare to single external SSD. Now let's start building the external SSD RAID. I already launched disk utility. Go to file, you have the RAID assistant. You don't need any external tool. Everything comes with macOS. By default, you already have the RAID 0 selected. In this video, I won't spend time on explaining the different RAID and I assume you understand the benefit and apparent shortcomings for RAID 0. So if you want to do this, take your own risk. The disk selection, let me choose the 2T7 and let me choose Apple FS. Let's give it an exciting name. The whole process is super easy and it, it takes less than a minute. You will have a RAID 0 device ready. Okay, done. Now you have the RAID set, RAID 0 here, and you won't be able to access the two SSD drives individually. You can only have access to the RAID 0. So later, if you don't like it, you want to restore to the individual disk, you can select the RAID set, and here you have a button, delete RAID. Now let me close it. We have a two terabytes RAID 0 drive ready. Now let's test what's the current performance. The same tour, let me select the new drive, RAID 0, start. As you can see, the write speed is 1000 400 megabytes not twice as fast as previously but it's good enough for read is a little bit slower than write so 
you may think, okay, that's the end of the video, right? We successfully achieved the super good performance. But there are two more things I want to cover in this video. First thing is, you may notice I never mentioned which part I used for this two external SSD drive. I used the ones in the back, which are real Thunderbolt parts. I didn't use the two front ones for the base model Mac Studio USB-C parts in the front. They are not Thunderbolt parts. They only support maximum 10 gigabits speed. Now let me switch the two drives from back to the front. Let's see whether we can achieve the same good performance. Now let me switch to the RAID 0 drive. Okay, testing. See, the performance is even worse than previously when we didn't have RAID 0 built yet. It's disappointing performance for the front USB-C parts. I've never found any official documents saying whether the two front USB-C parts, whether they are shared or not. If they share the same 10 gigabits throughput, then it makes sense. Otherwise, I really don't have any explanation why the performance is so bad. Oh. I have already moved the two drives back and they are using the fast Thunderbolt parts now. I removed the RAID 0 we just built. Now we are back to the initial state. What I want to show you is I happen to have a SanDisk 1 terabytes external SSD. So basically I have three SSD drives with the same size. Theoretically, I can build a RAID 0 device based on the three drives instead of just two, right? The reason I said it's just for fun because in real world, you don't really want to mix different types of drives. Let me try it, whether I can achieve better performance. In the same way, go to file, RAID assistant. And this time, let me choose all the three drives. Exactly the same way. Done. The drive is ready. Start the testing again. Choose the new drive. Testing. See? Super satisfying speed, almost 2.4 gigabytes. And the read is a little bit disappointing, but fast enough. Okay, this is the end of the video. By using two cheap external SSD drives, I achieve a read zero external SSD device with very good performance. I'm very happy. Thanks for watching.